Welcome to another MedCram COVID-19 update. Total confirmed now officially over 2 million. In the United States, we have been seeing a decrease in the daily deaths. And then there was the spike yesterday. It's unclear if it was related to how New York City death toll was being counted after these uh, 3,700 cases were added to the list. As it says here, previously the city had not counted people who died at home without getting tested for the coronavirus. And so now they are including that in the death toll, and there's probably more, according to officials there in New York. Overall, though, daily new cases seem to be plateauing. More time will tell. So I want to talk a little bit more about natural killer cells. As we've mentioned before, these cells are part of the innate immune system. And they go around and gobble things up and present them to the adaptive immune system, cells like T cells, etc. But they have things inside of them, enzymes like granulysin, perforin, granzyme A and B. And these are all part of the process of destroying cancer cells, but also viruses that infect the body. So I also want to cover some evidence and some research that indicates how we can increase these things in our body. We've already talked about the effect of temperature on the body and how it increases natural killer cells. We want to look at something different this time. We're going to go on a little field trip, and we're going to learn something along the way, I hope. So in case you didn't know, if you walk through a forest, that's known as forest bathing. And this is a really interesting paper. It was put out in 2007 as a joint effort between Nippon Medical School in Tokyo and Stanford University School of Medicine in California. So what they decided to do was to take 12 subjects, in this case all of them were men, and to have them spend three days and two nights in a forest. Now, these subjects were employees at large corporations in downtown Tokyo, and they drew blood three days prior to this at 8 o'clock in the morning. And then they drove quite a long distance to a forest. And on day number one, they traveled. And in the afternoon, they took a two-hour walk through a forest, 2.5 kilometers And they made sure that they weren't doing any more exercise than they would normally do in a regular workday. Then they spent the night at a residence or a motel in the forest. The next morning, they got up and they drew blood again at 8 o'clock in the morning. So they could compare it. They wouldn't have circadian issues. And then again, for another two hours, they went on a hike, 2.5 kilometers in the forest. In the afternoon, took another two-hour hike, 2.5 kilometers, not too long. Then they spent another night in the same hotel, got up the next morning. This would be now day number three, and they drew blood again at 8 a.m., and then they went home. Now, even though they took blood here on the second day, this was really after one day of completion. So this is going to be known as blood on day number one and this is going to be known as blood after day number two. So we'll look at the results for those. So what were they looking for on the blood tests? Well, they looked at the leukocytes, or the white blood cells. They also looked at those things that we talked about. They looked at granulysin, perforin, and they looked at granzyme A and B. Now let's see what they found. As you can see in this graph, on the before, day one and day two, they were able to see natural killer cells per microliter went up statistically significantly on day one and day two relative to before, and on day two relative to day one. You can see here that the number of cells and the percent of cells also went up, and that the natural killer cell activity also went up. Now what about those blood tests? Granulysin, perforin, granzyme A, granzyme B. You can see that there was an increase in all of these substances from day zero to day one, and from day one to day two. This graph over here shows exactly the same thing, except on a proportion basis. So why did this happen? And why did they even think anything would happen in the first place? Well, it seems as though the authors had a hunch, because what they refer to here at the end of the paper are something called phytocytes. 
These are aromatic compounds that are put off by trees, and they are well-known compounds such as alpha-pinene, beta-pinene, isoprene, and they had studied this before and shown that in a test tube, these compounds could enhance human natural killer cell activity and increase expression of intracellular cytolytic molecules such as perforin, GRA, and GRN. Of course, that was in vitro. That suggested that on this trip, phytoncides may partially contribute to the enhanced natural killer activity during the forest bathing trip. They finally conclude that taken together, these findings indicate that forest bathing can increase human natural killer activity and that this effect is at least partially mediated by the induction of intracellular porphyrin, GRA and B and GRN, and increase the number of natural killer cells. But there's still a lot of questions there. Maybe the effect was because they were no longer at their job, or they were feeling more relaxed. So they did another study. Same group published a paper titled, Visiting a Forest, but not a city, increases human natural killer activity and expression of anti-cancer proteins. So here is what they did. They divided it into two groups. The top group went to a forest, and the bottom group went to a city, not Tokyo, because they're from Tokyo. In fact, both the forest and the city were about the same distance Three days prior to the experiment, they took urine and blood samples. And then what they did is something very similar to what their first experiment was. On the first day they arrived, they did a two-hour trip, but in the forest, they went on a nice path, 2.5 kilometers. In the city, they also went for about 2.5 kilometers. And they did the same thing on the second day, in the morning and in the afternoon. Same with the city group, in the morning and in the afternoon. Of course, in the morning, again, they took urine and blood samples, urine and blood samples. And then finally, on the third day, they did exactly the same thing that they did in the first study. Two hours, 2.5 kilometers, and two hours, 2.5 kilometers. And then both groups went home. What they also did was they measured it again seven days later in both groups, and then 30 days later in both groups. And there was one other thing that they measured. Finicides, those are those aromatic compounds that are secreted by trees, the alpha pinenes and the beta pinenes and the isoprenes, and the list goes on and on. Well, they measured it in the forest and also in the city. Let's see what they found. Here's a list in terms of nanograms per cubic meter, and you can see here the forest bathing trip was just completely filled of these phytoncides tricyclines, alpha-pinenes, camphenes, beta-pinenes, etc., etc. Whereas in the city visits, you can see that for the most part, there was none that was detected. Okay, let's look at the forest bathers first. Here we have before they went to the forest. Here we have at the end of day one. Here we have at the end of day two. And you can see both statistical significant increase in natural killer cell activity. And notice that even though they went back to their homes in Tokyo, seven days later, there was still a statistical significant increase. It wasn't until even 30 days later, there was a mild increase that was statistically significant. Let's go over to those that went to the city. Here it is before, and then on day one in the city, staying at a very similar hotel, and day number two in the city, staying at a very similar hotel. And so we can see here that the increase in day one for the city here in black was very minimal, whereas for the forest, the increase rate of natural killer cell activity was significantly elevated, much more so than those for the colleagues that were in the city. So that was activity. Let's look at cells themselves, natural killer cells. Again, for those that went to the forest, significant increase in the cell count, and then again at day two, holding steady even seven days after the initial exposure to the forest, and then even at 30 days. Whereas here, in the tourists to the city, there was really no increase that was statistically significant. And again, we see that the forest tourists had a much higher increase in natural killer cells than the city tourists. Okay, what about those enzymes inside the natural killer cells? We can see here again, before baseline, we see it increase at day one, day two, holding steady at day seven, and even elevated at day 30. And we see that across the board for all of these enzymes. 
when we look here at those that went into the city, no statistical significant increase. They did also measure T cells. Notice that T cells really didn't change in either of the camps, the city tourists or the forest tourists. Now, we did say that they had measured urine, and what they were looking for there in the urine was urine adrenaline. And that's important because adrenaline in general, or a stress hormone, is going to reduce the number of natural killer cells based on previous research. And so here in our forest tourists, we see that the baseline adrenaline in these gentlemen that worked in Tokyo went down significantly by day one, and then by day two, there was a statistical significant difference between day two and the baseline. We did not see that here in those that were city tourists. So all of this led them to conclude that in summary, a forest bathing trip can increase human natural killer activity, the number of natural killer cells, and the expression of intracellular porphyrin, GRAB, and GRN. Forest bathing may contribute to decreased stress and improved immunity, and phytoncides from trees may partially contribute to this effect. So I'm sure you're saying at this point, like I am, how do we really know that these essential oils from the trees are actually having this effect and it's not something else? Well, they did a third experiment. That's right, a third study titled Effect of Phytoncide from Trees on Human Natural Killer Cell Function. Okay, so this is what they did. They took 12 subjects from a medical school in Tokyo, and they had them sleep overnight in Tokyo in an urban hotel. But when they went to bed at 7 p.m., they had already been diffusing the stem oil of Hinoki cypress, which is this thing right here. They went to sleep at 11 p.m. and they did it each night. In the day, they did their work as they would normally do, so they didn't take them out of the city. These were medical students, so they weren't gonna get out of nothing, right? And they took measurements of the Hanoki Cypress stem oil and other phytoncides in the hotel room itself. So let's see what happened. So they checked for alpha pinenes, and sure enough, on day one, two, and three, and the mean, there was a consistent amount of this oil, this aromatic compound that was circulating in the hotel room that they slept in. Here we're looking at the number of natural killer cells activity and the percentage of natural killer cells before and after they slept. And you can see there was a statistically significant increase in both. And what about those enzymes? Statistical significant increase in all of those before and after. What about urinary adrenaline? If you notice here, this was not a statistical significant decrease in urine adrenaline. Remember, these students were still in the city. They were just sleeping in the hotel room. They had not gone out to the forest. And if you notice here, their baseline was just around five and it dropped to just around four and that was a non-significant p-value. Now, if we go back to that second study, notice that the baseline adrenaline in the urine was around five, so similar, and that by day two, this was already below three and statistically significant. So even though we're comparing apples to oranges, it seems as though the urinary adrenaline dropped more when they actually went to the forest than when they just stayed at the hotel in the city. What they did show, though, is that short-term exposure to a phytoncide was able to increase the surrogate for natural innate immunity, which is natural killer cells, both in terms of percent and also an absolute number. But they also say that it's necessary to conduct epidemiological studies or prospective studies in a population exposed to phytoncide in daily life to confirm its beneficial effect on human immune function in the future. So in summary, phytoncides from the tree can increase natural killer activity, the percentage of natural killer cells, and the expression of intracellular perforin, GRAB, and GRN. Phytoncides in forest air may partially contribute to the increased natural killer activity in subjects visiting a forest. So why did I find this interesting? Well, the first thing, of course, is it's about the immune system. 
Is it possible that we are leaving our city dwellers at a disadvantage because of this reduction in their natural killer cell activity? We do notice that cities are being hit particularly hard, but that could be for other reasons because of the fact that people in cities are very close to each other. But one has to wonder. Then there's the practical aspect of it. I mean, according to that second study, you only need to do it maybe once every seven days to get a benefit. Is there some prescription, perhaps, taking a rest once a week to go out to the forest and maybe spend some time to get the benefit of that? That might be interesting. The other aspect about this that's interesting is the social isolation that, of course, many of us are in at this point. Does this allow us to go out into the forest to get a benefit from this? Does our social isolation policy make something like this more difficult and maybe putting us at a disadvantage? It's hard to say. And how I see that third study is that there's some way of reproducing the effect of going out into the forest by vaporizing essential oils for instance, the Hinoki cypress in this case. But do we really think it's only the Hinoki cypress that does this? Or are there other things out there in the forest that may be contributing to it? We did notice that there wasn't a precipitous drop in urinary adrenaline that we saw in that second case. So do these three studies change anything for you? 